Hello everyone and welcome to another Versus video. I'm Brad Nelson, I'm joined by Todd Anderson, and I guess it's not another Versus video, because this time we're playing with M15 cards. Yeah! That's right, the new set is right around the corner, and uh, now I'm not going to be doing a deck tech on my deck, because it is just, in fact, uh, Ben Friedman's Friedman. uh, black-white deck from the Invitational with a bunch of new cards, Caves of Coilos, some Sign and Bloods, and an Urborg to help out uh, tapping those Mutavolts. Basically nothing you ain't seen before. Yeah, like, you've seen it all. Yeah, like, I, uh, uh, the one thing about core sets that are usually, like, not so great is that they are a bunch of reprints of things we've played with before, but... Not so great. But, I had a... An asterisk next to it. Okay. But this core set is actually just awesome. Like, it's unbelievable. They're, they're bringing back so many cool things that actually f seem like they will function well in the standard format, which is awesome. Like, I think they'll function poorly. I, if you read my article from last week. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll just let you talk. Then. I'm, I'm done talking. Okay, no. So so my idea of M <laughs> M15, before we get into uh, Todd's Junk Aristocrats deck, is that all the cards are not as powerful as uh, all the previous cards they've been making. They don't just create multiple... Uh, um, forms of advantage, either that's like tempo, like Elspeth. Let's use Elspeth as an example. It comes down and it creates tempo, card advantage, and and a win condition all on its own. So all you have to do is survive to cast it. Whereas a lot of these cards are really complex and and difficult to understand where they're going to go. Also, they don't just win the game when they come into play, which is awesome because that's how Magic should be played. Yeah, like synergy and yeah, and, and you have and to you have building to your synergy. decks. And yeah, yeah, and 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 the metagame will rotate as opposed to just. Desecration demons and all Pack this rat. stuff, yeah. yeah. It's going to rotate so much that Brad's playing Pack Rats and Desecration Demons. <laughs> mm, I'm saying after rotation. But anyway, let's get Not into Todd's Junk Riskrat's deck and show you the power yeah. of Cartel Riskrat, because I've never seen it. All right, so uh, if you take a look at the deck, you will notice a lot of similarities to uh, the Junk Riskrat's deck that Brad uh, piloted to a top four Grand Prix finish in Miami last year, as well as winning uh, Star City Games Open with the deck. Uh, obviously, we lost... All of the things from Innistrad, which was most of the cool elements of the deck, like the Doom Travelers, the Blood Artist, yeah, the Paging Lingering Blood Souls. Artist. Yeah, Blood, Blood Artist, we need you. <laughs> yeah, I would love to have that card back. But what we do have, uh, we still have the core of Cartel Aristocrat, Verils, and Voice of Resurgence. And um, obviously, the, the Junk version was a lot different from the original Blasphemous Sack Boris Reckoner version. Um, but it was way more about synergy and way less about just like big explosive win conditions uh, with the Blasphemous Sack Boris Reckoner. And... This is what I wanted to build around. And the reason why I wanted to build around this now, as opposed to, you know, the last nine or ten months or whatever where we've had, like, all four of these cards, mm -hmm. is because now we have access to Court of Calling. And I'm not sure this card is actually going to be as awesome in this deck as I think it's going to be, because we are playing three colors. We don't have that many green creatures to help convoke the triple green. But we do have a reasonable amount of really awesome creatures to go get in very specific situations. Uh, as you can see, we just have, you know, eight creatures right here that are all just one ofs that we can go get in very specific situations, or they're just pretty good to cast on their own. Mm -hmm. If our opponent tries to Supreme Verdict us, we can go get Athreos in response and they either take a bunch of damage or we get all our guys back. And if we have Xanthar Necromancer in play, we also get a bunch of 2 2 zombies. So that's a pretty sweet card for, you know, the Wrath situation. Uh, if the board's stalled or you're flooded on lands, you can go get a pack rat, start making that engine. Uh, we have At the low, low cost of five resources. Yes. Yeah, pack rat is... <laughs> I, I hate that card, but I think I think it's a good one. Uh, Reclamation Sage is uh, the new Viridian Shaman type card. They can hit artifacts or enchantments. Uh, this card is awesome in the format, being able to kill Detention Sphere, Underworld Connections, just a, a huge number of cards, and being able to tutor forward in responses is, is great. Uh, yeah. We also have a Brev Decay to do that, but yep. yeah. Uh, one uh, Obza Ghost Council, awesome against Control decks. One Archangel of Thune, awesome against Red decks. Uh, one Banisher Priest, which I think could be pretty sweet against a number of strategies. Uh, being able to put it into play at instant speed is pretty cool against uh, things like, you know, uh, Hexproof if they're trying to madcap skills you on a non-Hexproof guy, or just having a way to deal with like a Desecration Demon for a turn, or there's a, there's a lot of uses for this guy. I like the idea of if your opponent ever has a, a pull of Kranos in play, <clears throat> and you're just at that stare down because you can't attack through it, uh, that you can just, in response to Monstrous, just go grab this yeah. and, and get rid of it for the turn. Yeah, some people were suggesting Shadowborn Demon. I think we don't want to overload on 5-drops, and I think that Obzadot and Archangel are a little better in the 5-drop slot than that guy. And Banisher Priest fits the uh, the Court of Calling bill a little bit better, because having 
you know, eight creatures slash lands mm. in play is pretty tough. Also, uh, Shadowborn Demon is more of a tempo-based uh, card where, like, you're mm. okay investing your whole turn into an Obsidot. Yeah. Whereas, like, with the Shadowborn Demon, you invest your turn into it, but then you can't attack with your guys because they're, like, tapping for cord. Right. Uh, we also have uh, Singleton Fire Action Revoker, which uh, does not shut down Underworld Connections, unfortunately, because you can't name the land that it's enchanting. But uh, it is good against a number of things, like an opposing Pack Rat or uh, Elspeth. Uh, I mean, most of that, that card's going to name Elspeth a lot in this format. Yeah, I think it's also going to name Jace uh, Architect of Thought, not the Living Guild Pact. <laughs> I think Living Guild Pact's actually really good. I think he's probably much better than people are giving him credit for, but I do not really want to cast him. And I, I think that's I want bad. to cast him with Garrick and uh, Garrick's whatever. The, Garrick's whatever. The, the nine mana and just oh, get you. Oh, and Garrick's Wake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that one's pretty sweet. Uh, we have uh, Veril's a Scar Stripe to go along with Cartels to be uh, an extra uh, sacrifice engine. Uh, but also just being able to scavenge all these random creatures that die is pretty sweet. Uh, a couple Sin Collectors for Disruption along with a bunch of discard spells in the sideboard. And then uh, the card that I'm not sold on just yet, but I actually want to try it, was uh, Selesnian Charm. I like the idea of having answers to things like Polkernos and Desecration Demon, while also being able to use it as a combat trick uh, alongside uh, Cartel Aristocrat while it's attacking, or just being able to uh, make a 2-2 Knight and then untap and actually get some beats on. The mana base is very complex, but uh, I think it's more so because we have access to so many dual lands, I personally am not good enough at building mana bases to know which lands are correct until I actually play with them. So we are only playing uh, five scry lands, uh, we have uh, five basics, a couple of pain lands, and then 12 shock lands, because I think that those are just the ones that you have to play. No, of course. Um, like, you'll never play a tricolor deck without all. Yeah, all I mean, the, it, there's arguments to be made for, like, mana confluence. Uh, there's arguments against and for Swamps. playing uh, Urborg, I think. Uh, we actually talked about this earlier. Brad made a good point that playing Urborg in a black deck is not always, uh, like, what you want to be doing, because against Mono Blue, they have a lot of really awkward draws with Mutal Vault. And just letting them tap their Mutaball for black mana to cast Nightfall Spectre is pretty big. So. Yeah, I mean, you have to really need the Urborg to do something. Yeah. And this deck doesn't have uh, Mutavolts or multicolored black cards except for an Obsidot. And if, if your mana base doesn't allow you to cast an Obsidot, it's it's not Urborg's fault. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's just <laughs> not. Um, especially because you're playing Three Swamps. And I, I, I would never play Three Swamps in a deck with all of these. Because, like, if you ever get stuck on two mana, you can't even cast your spells. Yeah, I know. Oh. That's okay. Oh, I was just making sure you're aware of oh, this. I'm, I'm perfectly aware that we are going to have some awkward mana issues. Yeah. But I think <laughs> that's more so just because we're playing three colors. And, yep. I mean, I don't know. It's fine. All right, guys. Well, that is the main deck for Junk Aristocrats. Let's go take a look at the sideboard so Brad can insult me even more before we get to play. Hey. All right, so, Brad, what did I do wrong on the sideboard? Let's hear it. Oh, no, no, no. I... I, I it, I, I'm already full from the main deck. I, I couldn't take another bite. Okay. So, uh, in the sideboard, we have uh, a couple of measures against uh, some of the cards that are harder for us to deal with. Uh, we have three Bob Blights that come in against uh, aggressive decks, but they're primarily to help us against Pack Rat, since Pack Rat can get a little out of control. Uh, it's possible that we may want to skew our mana base and even uh, uh, try to play these main decks, since Pack Rat is going to be such an annoyance. But uh, I wanted to try them in the board for now, just to see how uh, Selesnya Charm was. A couple Doom Blades that come in against Monsters, Mono Blue, uh, various other creature-based mm -hmm. decks. Uh, one Liliana uh, Vess, as well as Four Thoughts used to come in against Control decks. But um, I'm not sure if this card is actually better or worse than Stain the Mind. Um, I do want to have some way to hit their Sphinx's Revelations, and I think Stain the Mind might actually be uh, pretty good in this deck. We have a lot of creatures to help Convoke, so we can usually cast it on like turn three, you know, maximum turn four or whatever. Uh, but if we have, you know, Thoughtseize, or not dress, uh, Sin Collector, and then, you know, either Lilian or Stain the Mine uh, after that seems pretty good. Um, three on Flinching Courage and Nyx Fleece Ram against Red Dex. Uh, Courage on a Cartel Aristocrat is pretty busted. And uh, Nyx Fleece Ram, I know this looks a little awkward as a one of. <laughs> Uh, but oh, my, okay, okay, I'm, I, I can't take one more. Bite. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> my favorite thing about your Court of Calling sideboard is you have one creature in your sideboard, and it's a Nick Fleece Ram. Well, to be fair, I think that there are going to be a lot of matchups where citing out some of your bullets are gonna, is mm -hmm. going to happen, as well as like there's even potential to cite out Court of Calling in a number of matchups. Yep. And uh, if I'm ever like boarding into a like heavy removal, like I think cutting cord is actually reasonable. Mm -hmm. Like against the mono blue decks, I'm probably going to be cutting cord and some number of really like the worst creatures for Doomblade, Bio Blight, and probably Dictate of Erebos as well. And cord of calling gets much worse when your creature or when your deck doesn't have nearly as many creatures in it. So that that is very true. And uh, 
And it's kind of like the old, uh, this was years ago, what was it, like Pedal to the Metal, where I yeah. was just a mono creature main deck with like just a spell sideboard. So yeah. I can understand it. Yeah, uh, and uh, that's basically it, I guess. Uh, yeah, so that yeah. is the Junk Aristocrats deck with uh, M15, a uh, bunch of new cards in here. But uh, yeah, only one actual new, new, new card. Yeah, only one new card. Uh, the the newer cards are going to be coming in our next couple videos, so pay more attention on Wednesday and uh, yeah. Friday, where Todd may be playing with Planeswalkers, and I may be returning some creatures to the ranks. Oh, they yeah. might have died, yeah. and then I might have brought them back. Yeah, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy me killing Todd with Packrat a lot while he gets frustrated, and we will see you at the recap. <laughs>